Hello everyone, welcome back to me doing incredibly dangerous electronics that will probably kill me one day. So, what we got here in this mess of a thing, this here is a is a base I made for a Tesla coil, completely random, we'll do a video about that maybe later. But here we have a few key components that you can see here, two power supplies, 12 volt ATX, these are computer power supplies. And what we care about these, we care about the rails, so this has uh, a total of 30 amps between two rails, and this is a 20 amp single rail. So combined, I could probably pull about 24 volt, 20 amps, which is about 480 watts, which is what I use to power this thing. Now, one thing I'd like to specify, please avoid using these. Do not use this if you can. Buy a 24 volt, 20 amp power supply. It'll make your life so much easier than what I had to go through with this. I will make a separate video on how to get these wired in series, any protection problems that I came across just to share my knowledge on everything I've learned with this because I have been working for weeks on these two power supplies. So from these power supplies we have the negative going straight into this which if you've done high voltage and worked with flybacks you know that this well you currently see it but I'll have a close-up of it later on explaining every part. This here is a ZVS. It is two ZVS's on one board. So you have one side and this side driving two different flybacks. So I have the negative output of my 24 volts connected here and the positive connect to this shunt. This shunt, now that I custom made, it's not that hard to make, is going into this multimeter with parallel connection between my uh, read points, the sense, the sense wires here, and I can read current without blowing every current meter. I don't have a current clamp. If you do have a DC current clamp, use that, they're a bit pricey. And I have, and then after that, the shunt, which is like, it, it, it doesn't have any impedance, very low resistance, like, I think it's 0.1 milliohms or something, is going into the positive out, positive input of my ZVS. Now this ZVS, bog standard ZVS circuit, it's two of them, you can look it up anywhere, 0.68 uh, microfarad capacitor, 260 ends, and basically, like, I have a bit bigger inductors, but it shouldn't cause a problem. And then this leads off to two DC flybacks, they're big, big boy flybacks. So, I got these both out of CRT TVs, very easy to get. But I've had a problem. This flyback here is broken. It works, but when I run at 24 volts, there is an arc in between which you can hear. It doesn't negatively input uh, impact the performance, but eventually this will probably kill itself. Which is kind of sad, and I'll have to find another one and everything. But it works for now, I don't have to do anything for now. Now, these are these two flybacks are connected in parallel, as you can see here, across our negative points. And here's the, the chicken stick. Whenever you do anything with high voltage, and I should add it right here. If you don't have experience with high voltage and you're thinking about doing something like this, please don't. I'm not responsible for any harm you might cause to yourself, loved ones, house, due to the use of very high voltage, as you will see later on, as I will demonstrate the arcs. So that's it. Now I will go over into a different camera view and you, we will look at just this ZVS, just how it works and what I've done and why it's special. Let's talk a bit more closely about this here, this, the, this masterpiece, the middle of everything in this build. This here is the ZVS, which I like to call dual channel because it has two ZVSs. So, connections here. We have uh, the ZVS outputs. We have uh, across the capacitor to the coils and across and, and across the inductors to the center tap of those coils to the flybacks. That's not what you care about. You care about the ZVS. The board here in the MOSFETs. 260 ends. Not two 260 ends. Four 460 ends, if you could count. I just threw a wire off. So, these for I chose for uh, 260 ends over the 250 ends for two reasons. First, they can handle a bit more current, while a 250N can handle about 30 amps. These can handle a bit more, they can handle up to 50. And also I chose this because I had them. I didn't have any 250Ns lying around. So, uh, while working with this, I had one side no work while I first booted it up. And I tried it, I changed the MOSFETs out, and that's probably what will fail, the MOSFETs. You won't have anything else really failing this circuit. It's the MOSFETs, because nothing else really has the capability while well, you'll blow up like, the resistors or something. No way, it's just not going to happen. If anything's going to fail, it's the MOSFETs here. So, uh, the four MOSFETs are connected to this part, for the, as you can see, has been lifted up from the this big heatsink that I got of an old DC power supply. I have hookup wires connected to the gates, the all the legs of the MOSFETs that go up and act 
and act as connections, as you can see, really small pins here that connect to every component. Now, if you Google ZVS, you'll get the circuit which I used, and I just had two of them and put them in this heatsink. Capacitors are hot glued on the heatsink, they get pretty hot, so it's, it's good to have it. The inductors, I think, are a bit more than 200 millihenry, millihenry. I would suggest you get a bit smaller inductors and a bit bigger inductors. It, for me, it didn't matter, it still pulls what I wanted, but it could be a bit more efficient. So, uh, I've already talked about these flybacks and how, how you wind these, uh, these coils. You take one coil, you wind five turns, and then you take another coil the same and wind the same direction. They have to be the same direction. So, I have uh, uh, low here, high here, low here, high here, as for like when, where the wire comes out. You take the two center wires and you connect them together, and that's your center point. You do it for both of them. You take wires and connect them, solder them. I put some heat shrink tubing on there, and that's it. Now, you could wire these in series. I wouldn't recommend it. You would get very high voltage, yes, but it's also a bit dangerous for these flybacks. You might hit the breakdown voltage and break down the insulation between them. Found a resistor. Who cares? So basically that's it. This ZVS isn't very expensive. It's probably like 10, 15 for the whole thing. The most are the most expensive. I got for three euro each. So it'd be around 12, eh, maybe like 20, 20 euro. I paid for this whole thing. It took probably two hours to put together because I'm not that good. So that's basically it, the whole thing. Power comes uh, from these two points here that are connected together in parallel and leaves from here, which are just the negative across, which is the negative across the, the drains of all the MOSFETs. Wait. Yeah. Across the source of all the MOSFETs, the, the drains connect to the capacitors. My mistake. So this is basically it. So now that I've showed you every aspect of the circuit, I will do one more clip of me arcing it at different voltages. I will do 12 volts, 15.3, 17, and last 24. I've already done it, but I'm just going to show you and show you specs of how many amps it pulls and how efficient it is. That's it for now. I will cut over to the clip where I just use this and show you how it works. So that's been it about this whole setup and what I the hurdles I went through to get this all working. If you want anything more specific, like explain a bit more specific, I will make a video on the power supplies and everything. But if you want like something more in depth about the maybe the setup of the flybacks or the ZVS, something like that, just post down in the comments. And I'll check it out. If it's a short answer, I'll just comment it. I'll just uh, say it under the comment. And if it's something a bit longer, I'll try and make another video. But that's been it. 
Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing. Goodbye.